Hello everyone, praise good and welcome to the fan day. Well, we're here to Q&A session once again, because, well, you guys have submitted enough questions to me that I can actually make it happen. So let's do as such. Now, I'm going to do this right, right beforehand before you guys ask, because I have, I have had this weird feeling that's going to be a common question. Yes. He's amiibo. He's new addition to family. It's big, it's fluffy, and size comparison? Anyway, enough about that. Yo, she stay put. Let's go on to the actual questions themselves. Now keep in mind, these are questions that we're building up for, I want to say, a few weeks to a month, and well, now they finally came to fruition, and we have them. We have several questions. We actually have more questions than we normally do, but the thing is, a lot of these questions only come from two people. So I'm going to ask them basically how they were asked, because they were asked, like, all in the same comment, so I'm going to keep it kind of in that style, but it is a lot of questions in general. Anyway. So, uh, so this first question comes from Red Mario 7 Which specific crafts material do you like the most? Paint? Yarn or clay? You know, um, I've actually I don't I don't craft much. If you couldn't tell, like I, I have no craft stuff in this room. If you couldn't tell, <laughs> but whenever I did do crafts, like my favorite thing actually was uh, pipe cleaners. You know those little those little wire thing, basically the little wire twist ties that had fuzzy bits all around them. And I would just, I would just take those and tie them together, tie them in knots, and try and make like an outline of something with them. But I haven't touched them in like ten years, so there's that. But from the from the choices you've given me, I'm actually more a fan of clay, to be honest. I really do like. For some reason, clay just feels feels like it has a lot more. It has a lot more going for it, if you will. There's a lot more surface area to work with. You can actually mold it and shape it just right how you want to. Whereas with paint or yarn, like, it, if you mess up, like, one iota of a thing, that's it, it's it's permanent, it's stuck there, you know, you stitch one thing wrong, oh, well, that sucks, you know, kind of like how you do with a Yoshi, <laughs> if you stitch one thing wrong, well, it looks like an oblong, or you paint something wrong, it looks bad, but clay, it's just like, mmm, that doesn't look quite right, hey, it fixed it. So, but yeah, that's basically it. Simple question, I know, but I, I kind of like these questions that are not specifically video game related. Anyway, the uh, second question, this one also coming from Red Mario 7. What newcomer in Smash 4 is your favorite, either DLC or not? I would have to say, like, I don't know, like, I'm thinking in my head who would be, who I like the most. It's kind of like, it's oddly enough, it actually comes down to like the Capcom side of the field. I actually, like, Mega Man getting in, that was a huge thing that we needed in the game. Like, you do not understand how big that was. And I guess, in, in any case, Pac-Man as well. You know, Mega Man and Pac-Man were probably my favorite ones getting added in just because, you know, I grew to, I find, like, in the past five years, I grew to enjoy Mega Man and what it was. And I've always been a fan of Pac-Man. Like... I would say I'm a fan of Luigi. I'm a closet Pac-Man fan. I'm a Pac-Man. Just Pac-Man's my man, man. But in terms of things that are like, I don't know how I would word this. In terms of newcomers that should have happened much earlier, or newcomers that have a lot of hype behind it, I actually think Bayonetta may have the biggest hype. I don't have a lot of game time in the Bayonetta games, so unfortunately I'm a little over my over my head in this. But Bayonetta was probably the biggest character, biggest new character we needed in this game. We didn't know it, but she actually, like, now that she's first party Nintendo, as weird as that sounds, weird as that sounds to say, it was kind of a necessary thing for her to come in. You know, she's got combos. She's over the top. You know, effectively... We, effectively, we've been playing a modified version of Smash when we play Bayonetta, if you will believe me in that. 
But in all, in all seriousness, like as much as I do love those four newcomers, they've all been gr all newcomers have been fantastic. You know, Schultz Schultz cool. I'm really surprised and happy that Ryu and Cloud both got in because those are the biggest gaming icons outside of Mario, Sonic, Pac-Man, and Mega Man. You know, we have gaming's seven biggest icons in Smash. But digest that at what you will. And I guess you guys, um, you guys, uh, Red Mario included, if you want to answer as well. In the comments, you know, what was your favorite newcomer? Now keep in mind, I'm, I've been going over mainly DLC, but keep don't don't forget there's Bowser Jr., there's Little Mac. You know, we got a few others that were put in from the from the very beginning of Smash. Now moving on to the next set of questions, um, these all these come from a different person, but they asked me several questions as well. <laughs> so all these questions come from Bounty Hunter Aquasta P. Uh, I've I've not messed up his name before. I know him better as Ishmael, I believe. I don't think I've used his actual name in him forever, so I may have gotten the wrong person. But um, he uh, he asks, and yes, your question is a little is a little late, buddy. But whatever. Do you have any New Year's resolutions you would like to share? Other than collect every amiibo known to man, or at least the Smash the Smash Brothers ones. Um, you know, that's the thing, like. I've kind of stopped caring about New Year's resolutions for several years now. I mean, forgive me for being a pessimist, but it's kind of like it's kind of like the whole thing that we joke about with New Year's and gyms in in America, at least that everybody's New Year's resolution is, "Oh, I'm gonna lose weight." D January first, the gym is absolutely packed. January second, the gym is slightly less packed. January third, the gym is empty, besides the regulars that normally go there. So, personally. I just don't, I don't really set New Year's resolutions. I guess if any, I just set, the New Year's resolutions are, that I set are really, be, be more of a social person, because as I've said, as I've said many times, seven years ago when I started this channel, you could barely get a yes or a no out of me. Now I'm talking more than I think I ever have in the rest of my entire life. You know, be, be more socially adept. Um, what is it? Be more socially adept. Do my best to say yes to everybody and everything. And do my best to reach out to people, new and old, in the gaming community, YouTube to community, whatever. Just try and build those social links even more. That's, if I have any New Year's resolutions, those are pretty much it. Yeah, they're kind of blanket and bland, but, uh, you know, I've never been one for imaginative they really, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, Bounty Hunter's second question. Now the initial hype of newcomers corn uh, wow, this is word weird. Now the initial hype of newcomers corn and bayonetta, who are scheduled for February release for Super Smash Bros. is over, what are your th thoughts of them from a calmer, more thought-out standpoint? How do you think they'll fare against an already massive cast of Smash All-Stars, and what do you think of their unique characteristics? Aight. Aight, so, here's what we're gonna do, alright? We're gonna go to... Okay, I, I should not talk street like ever. So, the newcomers. I'm gonna include Cloud in this, because this was part of the last Smash Direct. So, these three newcomers that we've got, I will first off say, right now, and this might make people upset, but... Why, why do we have shameless, shameless plugging for a game that just came out, just trying to boost sales of a game? I'm uh, speaking of corn, by the way. Like literally, that's all. The, that's the only reason corn is even in Smash Four, in my, in my opinion, is that th they're worried Fates is not going to sell as well, so they're going to shove it in the. They're going to shove the protagonist in the Smash, hoping it'll boost sales up some. Again. Pessimistic, but that's kind of how I feel. Corn is just them trying to trying to flood some sales, but their characteristics—I can't say he or she because lol, same issue with Robin. <laughs> I think Corn moveset-wise was actually very w well thought out. 
I do like how the Dragon Lunge, the, their side B is, you know, a toggleable thing that basically can work whether you hit a target or not. And kind of allows for a bit of mind games, you know. I guess I do like it a lot because on my personal on my personal me brawler, I like to use the the faint jump down B, basically uh, Zero Suit Samus's down B. Like that allows for a bit of mix-up because you can jump this way and then keep going this way with a kick, or you can jump or you can jump this way and come back with another kick. You know, it allows for some mix up So I do like the side B a lot, and I fear feel that will be a major thing in their move set. But outside of that. It's another Fire Emblem character. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Cloud. Now Cloud. Cloud, Cloud, Cloud. Holy crap. You do realize that almost... I, I'm going to go on a limb here. I'm really going to go on a limb here. I'm going to say 30% of us who own Smash have also never owned a PlayStation device. Myself included, until like two years ago have never owned a PlayStation device, so we have never experienced what Cloud is before Smash Brothers. Now that he is in Smash Brothers, we're being introduced to him kind of from a retrospective five years later in. Five years. Fifteen years. Call me. But... I don't know, it... He's... Cloud's addition again, was probably one of the big, most monumental things, like, outside of Goku, I think that was the biggest, like, oh, that will never happen, character. And... yeah, it happened. As far as movesets go, I actually do like how Cloud works. I, I love how Cloud plays, actually. He's... I need more time to play as him, but unfortunately I don't get a lot of time to myself to just practice smashing things. But I do like Cloud's concept of, you know, he's kind of like Little Mac a little bit where he builds up a power gauge and then he gets a one-shot super attack. But I love that he can also charge that up in one way or another to basically, well, he can basically be a catalyst for his own super gauge, unlike Little Mac who really can't all that much. So, he's... I, I like that he can actually... Uh, supplement his own super gauge in order to get off some niche attacks and that it can be used to recover, deal a massive knockback, be some be a little bit of crowd control or just try and go for the finisher. I love how all that works. And I do like that, you know, I don't think as far as voice wise because I know it's it probably irks a few people that uh, Cloud is using his Japanese voice, where every other character besides Marth is using their English voice. Okay, I should say Roy. Sorry, I forgot about Roy. But it probably irks a lot of people that that is a, that is a thing that happens, you know. But really, I think that the voice thing probably exists simply because you know it came from like Cloud really only had vocals, like only has like confirmed vocals from Japan. Because we didn't really get Advent Children until late on, and we didn't get like, we got like, a, we got like a subtitled version for the longest time, and then we got a translated version. But I, I don't know. I never watched it, so I don't know how the voice actor did for that one. But the, the point I'm trying to make here is we knew about, we know about, and are used to the Japanese voice actor more than the English one because they've been around longer than the English one. And last one. Bayonetta, or Bayonetta, oh, Bayonetta. There's something about a smart, a smart ass, a, just a smart ass cocky character that can back up that claim in a game where people are known for, well, being cocky and smart ass when they pull off a, a, a amazing combo. You know, true combos. Well, anyway, so she, I do love how Bay, like Bayonetta's personality, everything Bayonetta was perfectly done, which is saying a lot considering that she was the ballot entry, you know, the thing everybody voted on, that basically said, well, I would like this character in, can you get him in? Basically the not, not creator's choice 
creation. And Sakurai and his team like nailed exactly what she is from how she moves, how she communicates, or how she interacts with other characters. They nailed Bayonetta down to a goddamn T. So out of those, out of the three I mentioned, she's probably the best, the best, uh, well, the best DLC fighter we got there. So, well, I kind of went long-winded on that one, but, uh, but yeah, there's my thoughts. You know, more of a calm approach to the DLC that was announced it's coming out. Well, I, I want to say it's going to come out in like a month, three weeks. I'll give it the, the last DLC for Smash Brothers. Prepare to get sad. Smash Brothers is ending until until the NX. And Bounty Hunter's last question. Do you think Nintendo will make Amiibo for any of their other franchises? We have Super Smash Brothers, Super Mario, Yar and Yoshi. There it is right there. Animal Crossing, the cards as well. Splatoon, the upcoming Wolf Link Amiibo. Hell yeah, I want that thing. And third party Shovel Knight. So, I gotta reread your question because I went off on the tangent. <clears throat> so, will Nintendo make um, Amiibo for the other franchises? If they want to keep, if they want to try, I want to say, like, a business standpoint, like, a business standpoint, they probably will try and make as much Amiibo as possible, as where, as long as it doesn't feel like it's shoehorned in. Because, I mean, in this day and age where we live in an age where people make a lot of their profits based on how much additional content they can shove in our face, Nintendo is not stupid to that. It's just that they don't pursue it directly unless they can give us some additional benefit to it. Because, I mean... Uh... I've forgotten his name. Holy, I feel so bad. There we go. Um, as as Iwata said, games are meant to be one thing, fun, and that's what Nintendo's been trying to do this whole time: is make sure that we have fun. If they can give us additional collectible things, they'll make sure it is fun in some way. You do realize that they didn't even try because. Keep in mind, the whole Skylanders Infinity craze start well started back with Skylanders, or probably something even earlier than that, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. But that whole collectible action figures that you can use in a game thing started back like when the Wii first came out, or even before the Wii, like end of GameCube era. We started seeing that stuff pop up. So if Nintendo wanted to do something like that for profit, they would have done it as part of like a built-in thing to the Wii's launch, not like. Not like something that would come with, be like a down the road plan for the Wii U, their next system. They would have done something way back then. But now they have the added bonus of their those per, uh, per, peripherals able to do something additional in the game. Yes, they'll probably keep, they'll probably keep making the Amiibo. So not only do we get extra content, but so other people have. Excuse me. So that way. Even people who don't have the system have something nice to look at. I mean, I've already mentioned about pirate items. You, you can see this. You can see this all behind me, you can, and you're missing about 20 of them behind me because my fat head. But you see this uh, this amiibo lineup behind me, right? I mean, outside of Shovel Knight, which is in my going to be in my mailbox, probably, or it's probably going to be at my doorstep by the time this video goes up. Other than Shovel Knight, that's every. That's pretty much every single amiibo, including uh, these up here. I can't do reverse camera angles. Including these up here, the Animal Crossing ones. This is every single amiibo, and every single one does something in every single game. Brokey, not now. <clears throat> so it would kind of stand the reason that, you know, they're going to do something with every game at this point unless they drop amiibo altogether, which I'm kind of contradicting myself. Point is, they will make Amiibo for everything. If they make a new franchise, Amiibo will probably be like 50% of its of its share. Because, like the Splatoon ones, which plug in that series if if you haven't seen it, the Splatoon ones that you know they have the Amiibo challenges in it. I feel like those Amiibo were kind of last second thought. Just like, oh hey, let's add in extra challenges for extra gear for that give extra gear and whatnot. 
okay, well, we have Amiibo now. So, they'll, but in terms of the shoehorning, well, in terms of like from, you know, customer interaction, they're going to be a little hesitant to, to put in Amiibo on everything because if the new president, and forgive me, I don't know, I've forgotten his name, I've heard his name like three times, and I'm terrible with names to start with, but unless this new president is is going to take it from fun to full-on EA, the, yeah, wow, my words are stumbling all over themselves, the Amiibo are still going to be limited, if you will. Because the main thing is, they want Amiibo to, again, they want Amiibo to be functional as well as formal. They want to do something in the game as well as be something nice to look at. So, yeah, I just talked a circle around that. Um, but yeah, if they do more Amiibo, which I think Amiibo might be capped at this point unless they do a new franchise or if they have like a one Amiibo, one to three Amiibo per new game in a, in a series thing. Amiibo might be capped as soon as the rest of the Smash DLC stuff comes out. Because once those last... Well, we're still waiting on Lucas. So once the last six DLC Amiibo come to our store shelves and we can get them, that's probably the last huge influx of Amiibo we'll get for a long time, and then it'll be like one to two Amiibo every year for some reason or for some game. Wow, I just... Oh boy, that's, ami that's Amiibo. Anyway, everyone, I think I do thank you for watching this, this Q&A segment. I talked a lot about DLC, Amiibo, and Smash primarily, but, you know, it's fun. I do love doing these QAs every now and again. They're nice ways to get my thoughts from here to you, and I can sprinkle you with love with them. Don't ask what that was. If you have some other questions you want to stick in here, in terms of, you know, if you want, uh, if you want to have any other future questions answered on this kind of segment, instead of me playing a game for Fan Friday, you know what to do. Put that in the comments, and say something so I'm not stupid and answer your question in the comments because I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm stupid like that. I'm just like, oh, hey, that's a question. Me not attempting to hit my keyboard so I don't end my recording. But keep in mind, this Fan Friday thing, this is, you know, also a, a use, uh, game suggestion series where you guys suggest a game. If you have suggested a game once, I have it listed, it's on my list, like, I don't know, you probably can't see it, but there's this whiteboard up here. I've got everybody's suggestion listed on here, and the ones that I can't do, I've got listed on the notepad on my computer for if I happen to get the game in the future, so. I have everybody's suggestions, so if you suggest something, you know, keep it to, keep it on the down low, I will eventually get to it. But those suggestions are in a first come, first serve. Anyway, I've rambled, I've derped. I'm going to stop. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time when I'll either play a game for you guys or do more Q&A sessions. You have a good one. Left it up. Nailed it!